with news time information is power the current the news headline grazing roots lawyers side with states berate federal government despite the ban on open grazing by south south governors the federal government last week insisted on exhuming the grazing roots as a solution to the persistent farmers elders clashes in this edition Vanguard Law and Human Rights sought the views of lawyers on the face-off between the federal government and southern states. Chief Solomon Akuma posited that the proponents of grazing roots as a solution to farmers' elders' clashes are oblivious of the provisions of the Land Use Act 1978, which has also been incorporated into the 1999 constitutions. According to him, Exhuming the grazing roots, if they still exist, is not and will not be a solution to the farmers' elders clashes. The proponents of resorting to grazing roots as a solution to farmer elder clashes are so oblivious in the provision of the Land Use Act 1978, which has been incorporated into the Constitution of the 1999. Furthermore, the Land Use Act is a subsisting legislation which made copious provision on land use in Nigeria. If we are to tell ourselves the truth, there is no way any person could have used any land in any state for any purpose without doing so in accordance with the Land Use Act. The governor of any state has the statutory power to determine the purpose for which a land or parcel of land can actually be used. Also, the Land Use Act uh, legislation, if followed, empowers the governors of the states and also the local government areas, uh, government areas, that is, in terms of the uh, rural uh, places in the country. The president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Uwafo Aniba, sees the federal government's position as wicked and an attempt to seize land from people. According to him, officials of the federal government are complicit in the terror being unleashed by headsmen and bandits. First, the federal government has refused to feel the pains of Nigerian families that have lost their, life, their loved ones in these needless crimes against humanity. Instead, President Buhari is more interested in protecting the criminal killer headsmen and their business. This is quite sad for a sitting head of state Secondly, I have searched and searched and have found no law on which President Muhammad Buhari is going to base his John Dice proposal on. Thirdly, the Land Use Act, which is embedded in the Constitution, gives the governors right over land use in various states. The governors, particularly of the South, have made their position known, and I believe the President and his minders are just about to engage in one of those incoherent dysfunctional, dictatorial, and wicked policies aimed at depriving Nigerians of their land in clear violation of the Constitution. And this is the words of the lawmakers. A law lecturer at the University of Lagos, Wahab Shitsu, posited that the federal government stand was tantamount to a breach of the Constitution of the Land Use Act, saying that uh, delineating cattle routes across the state will amount to serial breaches of constitutional provisions as well as a provision of the Land Use Act, where Section 1 of the Land Use Act vests all land in the territories of a state in, uh, of a state and the governor who holds such lands in trust for the citizens. Except for the Constitution, which also incorporates the Land Use Act, is amended with the concurrent amendment of the Land Use Act. Any such delegation of cattle grazing routes across states will amount to illegality. The solution to elders, farmers' incessant clashes is the construction of cattle ranching. Consent of landowners is a sine qua non as no one is entitled to shave anyone's head without his consent. Lawyer and former law lecturer at the Lagos State University, Benga Ojo, noted that the federal government was relying on the non-existing grazing routes in an old unconstitutional law. He also said that the law in the federal capital territory is vested in the federal government. Land is under the residual legislative list with the effect that the federal government through the National Assembly does not have the powers to legislate on land 
except in the Federal Capital Territory. The old law being touted is unconstitutional. It is needless face off. I think very soon the constitutionality of the law will be tested in the courts and I have no doubt that the law will be set aside. I hope that the Federal Attorney General will advise the Federal Government appropriately not to add to the already charged and tension fueled farmers health cement problems in Nigeria. The solution is ranching. Approach the governors for land for ranching like any other farmer. If the federal government is adamant, we leave it for the courts to determine. That is the beauty of law and democracy. The executive director, Center for Transparency and Defense of Human Rights, Kule Edun, believes that the federal government's position and subsequent threat is hogwash and childish since all land except in federal capital territory belongs to the state. He also said that the public, public declaration of ban on open grazing by the southern governors is a welcome development. It is shameful that some of us are still encouraging open grazing and looking for grazing routes in the 21st century. There cannot be grazing routes in the southern states because most of the land are now inhabited by people and used uh, for farming unlike in the north where there are many ungovernable spaces. It is on record that some states in the north were actually the first to uh, ban open grazing. So why this hypocrisy? Are we not moving backward when other countries, even in Africa, have developed better uh, cattle management system? Land in every state belongs to the people of the states, but held in trust uh, for them by the governors. And the holy land that the federal government owns in the land with, uh, is the land within the federal capital territory Abuja and those land the federal government uh, had been given by the state government. The federal government's open threat to states is hogwash and actually childish. The state government should now walk their talk by enacting necessary laws that will lead to the prosecution of violators of the ban. The governor should learn how to charge, uh, take charge of this security of their states within the framework of the law and stop looking up to Abuja for help while their people are being killed. Joe Igwe is of the view that the president should not compound the already precarious situation between the farmers and herders. He said the ban on opal grazing was long overdue considering the numerous attacks by armed headsmen on farmers in the south and also cases of kidnapping for ransom. The president's order to the Attorney General of the Federation to dig up the 1963 Gazette on grazing routes for implementation is unrealistic as to his knowledge and such gazette does not exist, and if it does, it cannot apply to all parts of the country. For instance, there are many states in Nigeria today that were not in existence in 1963. How would such gazette be applied to them? Besides, any such gazette, if, if ever existed, has been overridden by the Land Use Act, which is an act of the National Assembly, and only the National Assembly is constitutionally empowered to legislate on issues for the country and not the Attorney General of the Federation. Thanks for listening.